بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Taqullah Wa alaykum bi sam'i wa ta'ah Wa in Abdin habashiyan Fa innukum Min ya'ish Minkum Fa siyara khtalafin kathira Fa alaykum bi sunnati Wa sunnata khulafa rashidin al-mahdiyin عذوا عليها بالنواذج وإياكم ومحدثات الأمور فإن كل بدعة ضلالة. In this hadith that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, Prophet صلى الله عليه وربي وسلم عليه said, عليكم بسمع وطاع. It's upon you hearing and obey the leader. وإن عبد هبشيان. Even if it was an Ethiopian slave. So that shows us an important principle in Islam that the Muslim and an important qaida of Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah that the Muslim hears and obeys the Muslim ruler. Even if the Muslim ruler were an Abyssinian slave, or even if the Muslim ruler was a fasik, was wicked, and an oppressive ruler. Taking your wealth, as the Prophet ﷺ said in another hadith, وَإِنْ أَكَلَ مَالِكْ وَضَرَبَ ظَهْرِكْ Even if he uh, took your wealth and oppressed you, you know, by beating, by beating your backs. This shows us the importance of the leader in Islam and not obeying and not uh, disobeying the leader. Even if the leader was in wickedness and sinfulness. This is something it tafakul ahl sunnah on this principle. When, and then going back to the hadith, the Prophet Wasallam said, وَإِنْ عَبْدٍ حَبَشِيًا Even if it was an Ethiopian slave. Then he وسلم, said, that verily those who live after me that they're going to see many differences. La ilaha illallah. How many differences do we see? We see so many differences amongst the Muslims. So much sectarianism. As the Prophet وسلم, said in another authentic hadith, If tarakatil yahud ala itta wa sab'in farqa wa if tarakatil nasara ala thnatain wa sab'in farqa wa sataftariku hadihi umma la talatha wa sab'in farqa kullaha fin nar illa wahida. قُلْنَا مَنْ هِيَا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ قَالَ مَنْ كَانَ عَلَى مِثْلِ وَمَا كَانَ عَلَيْهِ وَأَسْحَابِ الْيَوْمِ The Prophet وسلم, said in this hadith, which is the shahid for the other hadith, which, which shows us the importance for the other hadith, he said, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the Jews would break into 71 sects and the Christians into 72 sects and my ummah would break into 73 sects, all of them in the hellfire except one. And then the companion said, who are they, ya Rasulullah? And the Prophet wasallam said, Those who are upon my sunnah and the sunnah of my companions. So going back to the original hadith, فَإِنُّكُمْ مَنْ يَعِيشْ مِنْكُمْ فَسِيَرَا اخْتَلَافٍ كَثِيرًا So those who live after me shall, shall see many differences. Then he said, How did, What did he prescribe for those differences? What was the solution to the differences amongst the Muslims. When the Muslims differ, when these Jamaat al Ahbash called Shirk and Kufr, when uh, Jamaat al Shia, the Shia, when they curse the Sahaba, they call the Kufr and worship in the graves, worship in their Imams. And uh, these other people have a new type of liquor, and these ones have a new type of politics, and these ones have a new type of dawah. What is the. That's the ikhtilaf and kathira. That's what we see. We see many differences. What did the Prophet ﷺ prescribe? He said, فَعَلَيْكَمْ بِسُنَّتِي Then upon you is my sunnah. فَسَيَرَا خِلَافٍ كَثِيرًا فَعَلَيْكَمْ بِسُنَّتِي He said, you're going to see many differences. And it is upon you my sunnah. وَسُنَّةَ خُلَفَاءَ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَحْدِينَ And the four rightly guided khalifat. And who are they? Abu Bakr wa Umar wa Uthman wa Ali رضي الله تعالى عنهم اجمعين
both of those hadith strengthen one another. And both of those hadith show us the importance. It shows us that the ummah would divide and that there was a solution to that division. This, the division that we're experiencing, there's a solution. How do we get unity? Our unity comes from what? It comes from holding on to the Qur'an and holding on to the Sunnah and holding on to the Sunnah of the Khulafa al-Rashidin al mahdin the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. This is minhaj of Ahl sunnah This is the methodology of Ahl sunnah This is the way of Ahl sunnah This is the madhab of Ahl sunnah wa Ahl hadith wa Ahl athar wa Ahl salafiyun wa ghayr thalika min asma'ihim. This is what the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is ordered to be one Ummah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاتَّسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّكُوا And hold on, all of you together to the rope of Allah. And do not divide. Do not divide. That's what we're ordered, to be one Ummah. Not to divide. One community. But how can we do that? By, by holding on to the rope of Allah. What's the whole rope of Allah? It is the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. The Qur'an, the Kalam of Allah. The speech of Allah. The infallible, the divine speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and earth. And we don't give it its right. We don't give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his haqq. What's the haqq of Allah? Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu. قَالَ حَقَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى عِبَادِهِ أَنْ يَعْبُدُوهُ وَلَا يُشْرِكُوا بِشَيْءٍ وَحَقَّ الْعِبَادِ عَلَى اللَّهِ أَنْ لَا يَعْذِبَ مَنْ لَا يُشْرِكُوا بِشَيْءٍ That the haqq, the right of Allah is that you worship Him alone. And the right of the slave is that Allah will not punish him if he worships Him and Him alone. And we ask Allah the Almighty to bless the Ummah to be one based on Kitab wa Sunnah wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabi and Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.